Mike, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so you moved away 33 years ago. Yes. We kind of thought you'd forgotten about us. No, 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 quite the opposite. Yeah, your book is like, it's all full of, like, you're almost like a Canadian. I'm almost like a Canadian. Canadian, a hoarder. <laughs> Me? Well, that's what happens. There's, there's nobody more Canadian than a Canadian who no longer lives in Canada. And so, um, you know, I say in the book, and a lot of my friends in America accuse me of enjoying being Canadian. And I go, I do enjoy being Canadian. What's not to enjoy? It's not a perfect place. You know, as my dad would say, in a perfect world, you don't need a ut utopia. But, um, <laughs> but I challenge in the history of nation states to find any other country that's tried to get it right as much as Canada has. You know what I mean? And just even in the act of trying to get it right, is the right thing to do. We were very politically correct at times, and I always think, wasn't politically correct just being considerate and nice for the most part, you know what I mean? One can get trapped in it, but we're very polite people. When does that get bad? Uh, you know, believe me, all you have to do is go to a country where people aren't polite, and you kind of love the Canadian standoff of two Canadians in a doorway, after you, oh, nobody, after you, <laughs> after you, and you're just sitting there. In New York, you'd be like, go, right? But in Canada, it's fantastic. You know, that's who we are. But are we too polite? Are we, do we lack confidence? I mean, you've decided to live there. You've succeeded there. I do love America. It's a great place to make things. And I make things, you know what I mean? Um, I miss Canada. You can take the boy out of Canada, but you can't take the Canada out of the boy. You know, it's, uh, I'm British by heritage. Yeah, your dad was staunchly British. Yeah. He didn't like your accent. No, we, we had a Liverpool accent talk like that, like, great, love it. And then I would say, hey, Dad, pass the sauce. He'd go, sauce. Because you hear that, Mrs. What a terrible accent our children have. I go, you're the limey freak, dude. <laughs> you're in my country. We don't think we have an accent. The Canadian, there is no Canadian. Yes, accent. there is a belief that in the integer of the English language that we are at zero linguistically or yeah. accent wise. It's not true. We have a very thick Canadian. We, the accent is very, very pronounced, more than I think Canadians think that it is. Well, the one we always hear is oot. Say oot again. Oot. We don't say oot. Out. But there's a, I think, is it called a diphthong? I'm looking like as if there's a linguistic <laughs> Expert. A linguist here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can somebody find the linguist, please? Thank you. It's out. Out. And we don't really say a all the time. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. We really do. And there's another thing, too, of Canadian women uh, as, a, as a tendency, but not as a rule, the sort of, there's a, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And in America, you know, an American was telling my sister-in-law in America a story, and she was being polite, saying, so he's like, yeah, I was on the subway today. She went, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And the American was like, I'll get to the end of the story. You don't have to <laughs> shut me down. Because it sounded like, oh, yeah, will you stop talking? <laughs> well, exactly. But instead, maybe. we're saying, I'm interested. I'm, I'm listening I don't to you. Know. Maybe, maybe it's uh, passive aggressive. Maybe we're not really that polite. We're just not mm. telling you what we really think. There is a little bit of that. There is a, there's a little, we are, we, we will put up a wall of pleasant <laughs> to, to people, to Americans mostly. Yeah. Well, we feel very superior right now watching what's happening in the elections in the States. Well, no, I bet Canadians are doing a jig right now. <laughs> Look at those Yankee idiots. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm kidding. But for the most part, we're just not a terribly angry people. Hockey, of course, would make you think that, that what I just said is a complete lie. But, you know, the crowds at Maple Leaf Guard, now Air Canada Centre, like if the other team does a nice passing play, you will get a round of applause. I wore a Toronto Maple Leafs shirt to a New York Rangers game, and I evidently found out stuff about my mother. I had no idea. <laughs> evidently, my mother's a prostitute. There we have it. It's funny what you learn at a hockey game, huh? But do Canadians need to be more competitive? You, you say it's like American. Here's terrorists. what I say. This is just my opinion. This whole book is just my opinion. I, I'm happy to hear Canadians' opinions. You know what I'm saying? And I am actually, I am fascinated by what was, because it's not a famous experience being Canadian. We don't have a, if you're English, you can say it's, it's a little bit like Harry Potter. It's a little bit like, or if you're American, it's like a little bit like anything you've seen on Disney. And in Canada, it's, there's no real film for us to point to about a Canadian childhood. It often feels like a dream, you know what I mean? Beachcombers? No. You can't point that to anybody because no. nobody outside of Canada would have seen the beachcombers, which is no much... No one's seen anything? There's nothing... No and the Green Gables. And I can hardly say, okay, so growing up in Scarborough, so you remember when she got her pigtails in the inkwell? <laughs> well, it's not like that. But the point is, you know what I mean? There really isn't. We're not a culture for export. That's okay. But everything else, 
balances it out. I'll often say, we may not have put a man on the moon, but we've been awfully nice to the man on Earth. And then I'll say, but having said that, why can't we put a man on, on the moon? We actually could do both. That's what's so fantastic. I, I think once you're of the mindset that we're a country of alignment and a country of cooperation, then actually we're in a better position to do anything is the truth of it, you know what I mean? And that's my feeling about Canada. And I think civility will be our greatest legacy. When you went to SNL, you formed a bit of a bond with Lord Michaels, another Canadian. He yes. He took you under his wing. He really did. And gave you, he said as a Canadian, there would be two things that would be different. Well, he said, you'll do well, which is very, very nice, especially I'm scared out of my mind. He said, because you're Canadian and you'll study. And you'll have the necessary built-in, baked-in humility of being a Canadian that, oh, I better learn how this works, right? And I'll pay attention to the rules, you know? We, we love rules in Canada. And I'm just saying, go to a country that has no rules and see how quickly you go, boy, I really miss rules. It's, it's okay, rules. You know, of course, everything in its correct measure. But he said, you're not gonna enjoy things being unfair. Mm. He has said, you, your heart will be broken that many of the talented people that you meet, that character and talent don't go hand in hand in equal measure. Is that true? 100% true. But it doesn't matter. Hmm. It, it, it doesn't matter. For Americans, they'll say, did you meet so-and-so? And they'll say, what's he like? Canadian will say, was he nice? They need to be nice in Canada. And most cultures don't need you to be nice. Wayne yes. was created here. Yes. He's, he's a secret Canadian? No, he's very much, I mean, I'm Because he's not, from Aurora, not Aurora, Ontario. I know, but uh, here I am on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Every week I think I'm getting fired. I did a, a show here on Canadian TV, and I did Wayne on it. Hi, I'm Wayne Campbell, and this is my Power Minute. All right. And I thought, oh, I wonder if it should be Canadian. I turn to somebody, what's like, and I describe Scarborough, and somebody says, Aurora, Illinois. It was Christine Zander, one of the writers on Saturday Night Live. I said, oh, there's Aurora, Ontario. I handed it in that night. <laughs> That's how things work on Saturday Night Live. It's an under-rehearsed Broadway opening once a week, is what Gilda Radner called it. And, um, she also said it's a monster, an insatiable monster that eats your material insatiably. The amount of decisions that you think are based on a lot of time of thought and a little bit, no, you have to just write or you're not on the show. So the decision to have him be from Scarborough, but have him be from the suburbs, I made no concession to a Chicago accident. It's not like he talks like, oh my God, my dad gave me a dollar. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's absolutely not true. He has a Scarborough accent, you know what I mean? So, and it's just little letters to home within the whole piece. Well, in lots of what you do, there's hints of Canadiana. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can't sneak help it in. It. I do, little, uh, little packages home. It is interesting how very little the world knows about us. It's, it's shocking, and that's fine, but that's where we're at. Yeah. So how much on Saturday Night Live, how much should they talk about us? About Canada? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. Um, a friend of mine came up to see, I was at Second City in Toronto, a friend of mine came to see the show, American, and there was an anti-American song in the, in the show, which I actually didn't want to do, because I, I don't think it's interesting to be anti-American. I think it's interesting to just be Canadian, but it was a funny song and whatever, and the friend said, wow, I had no idea that you guys thought that much about us, the American said about Canadians. And I said, well, what do you think of us? And he said, we don't. <laughs> and I was like, Wow, game set and match, man. 